was really beautiful meditation. I told you I had a really short one. Mm -hmm. And it's right in line with the one that Becky just did. And it just goes like this. The glorious future of my heart is open to you. Come take a seat in my heart. Or you could say, oh glorious, beloved, my heart is open to you. Come, come into my heart. Or, oh, glorious God, my heart is open to you. Come into my heart. Yeah, I told you it was short. <laughs> I said, do yours, because mine's short. <laughs> so, um, I just really want to honor you all for being here today, uh, Sunday afternoon. And um, you're my favorite kind of people, the seekers. And, uh, you know, you can be hanging out watching me whatever it is, football or baseball right now. I don't know what it is. Both. Oh. Both? Okay. You could be hanging out watching both, and here you are. Hi. So, welcome here. Thank you for coming to see the, uh, the seminar. It's one of my favorite seminars to do right now. The feminine movement, the uh, balance of the yin-yang. That's actually a more politically correct title, because uh, one of the titles that I put the seminar out by is Women's Lip Sucks, the Women's Lip Sucks Seminar. <laughs> and sometimes I just put it out that way to attract the um, liberated women, because it's great having them in this seminar. Is anybody here a liberated woman? <laughs> liberated, I'm a liberated woman. Yeah, <laughs> I am too. I, I grew up a liberated woman. Um, did anybody here ever have a rocky, beloved relationship? Ever have a rocky one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some people here never had a rocky one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anybody here, I know nobody here, but somebody you know ever just say, you know what, I give up. I'm Not you, I know nobody here did that, but anybody you know just say, forget it, I give up. The love relationship is like, it's, 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 I don't know, Saturn to me. It's some other planet I've never been to. I don't understand it. Yeah, okay. Well, this one's for you. Not you. Not that particular one, but for all of us, because all of the uh, people these days lately have been having a lot of trouble since we had, um, well, well, let me give you a little overview. <clears throat> okay. We started out with Ward and June Cleaver and Beef, the Beef, and Mom kept the house and Dad went out to work and the kids all went to school and nobody gunned each other down at school, right? And nobody did in my high school anyway. It wasn't quite Leave it to Beaver, but we were still kind of close. Then, and women were kind of childlike then, weren't they? Because their husband earned the money and paid for everything and killed the bugs and took out the trash. And women had a pretty childlike existence at that time. And then women started going through an evolution. And just like any uh, oppressed minority would, they go through an awakening, a, hey, wait a minute, this is not okay, wait a second here. I can't get a job, I can't earn the same pay, I can't do all the things that I want to do just because of my gender. Well, that's not right. I mean, it's not right whether it's your gender or your color or your religion or whatever, right? Okay, so we started fighting. We had our rebellion, just like a teenager would. First we were childlike, and then we were teenager-like. We had a rebellion. And then we wore what we wanted to wear, and we could wear suits and ties and everything else, and go to get whatever job we wanted, and we could drive forklifts and bulldozers and anything, right? Yeah, and if a man had something to say about it, you know, we could slap a, a, a discrimination suit on him, right? And now women are in the workplace, so then we have sexual harassment, because now we have men and women more together all day long. <laughs> well, you're going to have more sexual energy flying around then. Okay, so now we have all these new problems. <clears throat> but the way that women came up was kind of like a teenage rebellion. Um, I mean, the tendency is to get angry at the perceived oppressors, which were the men. And uh, after the women's lib revolution, I don't know hardly any men that made that okay. Maybe, um, maybe like Phil Donahue and Alan Alda. I mean, those were the two men that figured out how to balance being in their masculine and still be okay with the feminine. I think all the men pretty much. Did you men ever feel kind of um, beaten up on during the women's lib era? 
They still do. They still do. They still get beaten up sometimes, don't and they? And they're right. Yeah. They're right. <laughs> they are getting beat up on. Yeah. So we went through this teenage era, sort of, with women's lip. Now, t t calling it a teenage, you know, rebellion period, I don't, that doesn't diminish it by any means. Because it is, it is our young people that affect the most change in our culture and get us headed in another direction. So that was good and important. I don't discount it at all. Now, we're seeing something go on where none of the fathers are at home raising their children. The women are furious, angry, because the dad's a deadbeat dad. That's a big, big pop word nowadays, right? Deadbeat dad. They're going to chase him down and make him pay for his alimony and child support. And um, he was maybe just in it for a roll in the hay for one night. And look what happened. And the woman, you know, I don't know if she stopped before they had the roll in the hay that one night and said, you know what? Um, I, I know that you're a wonderful man, and so let's have a commitment and, uh, you know, let's get engaged before we have sex so that if uh, we make a baby, it'll have a stable household. I don't know if any of the women said that, because along with the women's revolution, we had the sexual revolution, right? So everybody's taking off their clothes on the first date. <laughs> so the women are responsible too, right? Okay, so there's Debbie Dess, the women are angry, the women are angry at men. And sometimes the women are raising a little boy, right? Isn't it confusing for a little boy to be raised by a mother who's mad at men? The boy thinks, well, uh, uh, I'm a man, or I'm a boy, I'm going to be a man. Well, mom doesn't like men. Well, what do I do now with my masculinity or my femininity? And then there's a lot of confusion there, right? And the little girls are raised up, you know, be careful because men are this way. And so d do or don't do, whatever, based on mom's fears then that can create it, right? A self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so you see the dilemma. Now there's a breakdown of a stable home base. The children don't feel safe going home. And they go out to school and because the self-esteem's not there, they get picked on and picked on and picked on and then they finally get a gun and come back to school and shoot everybody that they're mad at. Okay, so that's the happy little Reader's Digest story of how we went. Now, Women get to step into their power. Now we actually have an opportunity, opportunity to go from adolescence, from rebellion and anger at men, to stepping into maturity and seeing how we can best use our power. Now, some of you got a man's body this time around, and some of you got a woman's body this time around. So it's kind of like, if you've got a woman's body, that means that you get to learn how to work best with a woman's body on planet Earth this time. If you get a man's body, you get to learn how to work a man's body. Okay, isn't that handy? It's kind of like, um, you know, during the women's revolution, how independent women got, which was good. I mean, we had to take that step. You know, it's the mountain, no mountain, mountain. First we were childlike, then we were independent, no mountain. And now, where's the third mountain we're looking at? What is the third mountain now? Well, if women are real independent, then they don't need a man, right? In fact, I can remember a t-shirt, a slogan when I was a teenager growing up. A woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. <laughs> you remember that one? I mean, the sentiment was like, who needs a man? Okay, so women are so independent these days. Um, okay, so we get this opportunity. Yeah, you got this. A woman's body. And so sort of like the premise for the seminar is, um, Im imagine if my, my vehicle, I have a vehicle and it's a bulldozer and it's really good at moving giant tons of dirt, okay? But I've been trying to run the Indianapolis 500 with my bulldozer. What happens? I keep on losing, right? Okay, now, what happens if I'm using my bulldozer to doze dirt? I'm successful. Okay, so your body is your vehicle. It's, it's hoisting spirit around. Spirit's just driving around this planet, you know, to interact with the world of form through this. And it may happen to be, you know, most of us on this planet are either a woman or a man, a woman's body or a man's body. You know, some or some of both. And also, remember this, what is this symbol right here? 
Oh, is that too light? Can you see that? Let me get a heavier color here. A darker color would make it nice and dark. Okay. I don't know if that's a whole lot better. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try red just to see if that's darker. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's this symbol? Yin -yang. The yin yang. And within the yang is the yin, and this will be the black one. Imagine this is black. Because they're black and white, right? Mm -hmm. And within the yin is a dot of the yang, okay? So even if you have a woman's body, you've got a bit of the masculine in you, right? And if you have a man's body, you have a bit of the feminine. And you know what, with women's lip, we've been trying to be equal, right? I want to be equal with the man. And have you ever noticed a lot of the love relationships, <clears throat> the romantic, the, the romance goes out of the relationship. Romance including all the hearts and flowers and the sensuality, sexuality goes out of a beloved relationship. You might have even experienced a beloved relationship where the sexual energy just went down to zero. Well, if we're equal, that means neutral. And the yin yang are not equal. They're balanced opposite reciprocals. And one gives way to the other, and the other gives way to the one, and they keep feeding into each other, and then that's how it moves and it's a flow, okay? So, tell me, what are some of the things that this symbol means? It represents a whole lot of different things, right? What are some of the things? Like, I'll start us. Uh, light and dark, good and bad, high and low, opposites, any, Duality, day and night, <clears throat> man, giving and receiving, uh huh, and they re represent masculine and feminine too, right? Do you all know which one, by chance, which one is uh, masculine, which one is feminine? Yin. feminine? Yin is feminine, and do you know which one is yin, the white paisley or the black paisley? Yeah. The dark one is yin, which is feminine, and the white one is yang which is masculine. Do you know why that is? Do you know why they picked the black one to be the feminine and the white one to be the masculine? The black one is the negative, the space. The female body has the space in it, the womb, the negative, the void from whence all magic is born. The masculine is white because it's the spark the sun, the initiating force, the yang. The feminine is the womb, okay? Isn't that neat? Now, some people, sometimes, especially in the New Age uh, rhetoric, say that to be negative is bad. Have you ever heard that? And that you should be positive all the time. How do you like that? Do you like that teaching? It's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> I mean, it's not necessarily so. Not necessarily so. I mean, polarity has positive and negative. Uh, most of us in here are dowsers, and if you douse somebody, a dog or a cat, you want and douse them at one end, they'll be positive, and you douse them at the other end, they'll be negative. So everything has positive and negative. And negative's not yeah. bad, right? No, it's just yeah. part of, of the world of form. Yeah. Batteries wouldn't work. Right. How would your car run if you had two negative poles? Or two positive poles. Yeah, or two positive. It wouldn't. Right. Good. Okay. So, please. Uh, how long has this or yin and yang been around? I, uh, yin and yoga has been around. It must be for untold centuries. This is as old as the universe, the Tao, God. <coughs> Yin-yang is, the demonstration is sort of like the, um, in this one little symbol, is the representation of the entire universe. 
and it's the reciprocating opposites. And if you can think of God or Tao as the um, resolution of the duality, you can think of it like a, that's a good question because it's old. He's right. It's very very old. Um, hot, cold, good, bad, man, woman, and everything flows from this God or whatever you call it. Yeah. So it's we humans that decided that good was good and bad was bad. And you know we don't know that. Just remember the story of the Zen farmer. <clears throat> the Zen farmer had one son and one horse, and one day the horse ran away, and the neighbor said, oh, that's bad. And the next day the horse returned, and with it came a wild horse, and they caught them both. And the neighbor said, oh, that's good. And then the very next day the son was riding the wild horse, training it, and it threw him, and he broke his leg, the son did. And the neighbor said, oh, that's bad. And then the very next day, the army came to recruit all the young men for a bloody war that was being waged in the neighboring town. And they couldn't take the boy because his leg was broken. And the neighbor said, that's good. That's good. And the Zen farmer says, maybe. He says, maybe. We don't know what's good and what's bad. We humans decided that. It's limited. It's very limited. It's called dualistic thinking. In fact, when Lewis Carroll wrote, uh, um, Thank you, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> he studied the fourth way teaching, which is from Sufism, and he put hid characters all in that to enlighten us. Tweedledee and Tweedledum, remember them? They couldn't get anywhere because they were constantly, Ooh. okay, well, that's dualistic thinking. It's good, bad, right way, wrong way, my way, or the highway. Okay, so we want to understand, uh, understand and reconcile this so that we can move forward, move out of dualistic thinking. We don't have to decide it's bad. Now, sometimes when I'm giving the seminar and I say, or sometimes, we have, we have a Wednesday night women's group. It's so much fun. You know, women are all invited. I'll give you a flyer on it. Sometimes I say, how do you feel about acting more feminine? So what, what pops up in your head when I say to you women, how do you feel about acting, being more feminine? How do you feel about that? Be more feminine. Pantyhose. Pantyhose. <laughs> yeah. Pantyhose. Does anybody get a sissy feeling? <laughs> Frilly. Frilly. You feel feminine? Yeah. And uh, some women go, oh, that, that's weak. I'll be a sissy. I'll be wimpy. I'll be not strong. Some women think that, though, right? Or some, some of us think of feminine as not strong, as if not strong is a bad thing. Okay? Um, some of us think of negative as bad. And some of us think of, for some of us, Saying no is like death. Is it ever hard for you to say no to somebody you love? Very hard. For some of us, very, very hard. I understand. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Oh, let me leave that up there for right now. What are some of the names that you heard uh, for menses, for menstrual period? What's some of the neat little words we've called it for our moon time? Here with your period. Curse. The curse. <laughs> Aunt Mabel's visiting. She's on the rag. Yeah. Some pretty disrespectful. I mean, the curse is probably one of the worst ones. Some pretty disrespectful. Now, some women will take Midol. You know, Midol's a painkiller, guys. <coughs> and they'll use tampons instead of pads. You guys didn't know we were going to talk about blood today, did you? You're happy you came. <laughs> and. They go to work. They don't care that they're on their moon. And some of the words that we use nowadays, enlightened women use, moon, holy time, ceremony time, blessed time, time of blood. The Indians would call you she who bleeds and does not die. Some of you may have passed through the portal of transcendence into the time of wise woman, which we call menopause, which is a time when the veil is thinned and now you can see the truth more clearly. You know, I mean, before you go through menopause or into the time of wise woman, you really only gain your really insightful wisdom. I mean, super insightful unless you do a lot of meditating and getting still. During menses, during your moon, when the veil thins and you can finally really see through all the clutter and yuck. Okay? So, 
uh, you know, in our society we think of menopause as bad. I just saw a commercial on TV a couple of days ago that had a natural pill for handling hot flashes to diminish your power surges so that you can't metamorphose into the butterfly that you are once you're a wise woman. How ridiculous. A natural? They have a nat Okay, I can't, can't go. That's so box. I'll never finish the selling. That was just ridiculous to me. I mean, hot flashes are the changes that your body goes through to become a butterfly, to become this wise woman, this warrior. Woman, grandmother, wise woman. Anyway, so these women, their moon starts. They stop themselves up, take a pill, painkiller, and then they go to work. Good, masculine, little worker bees. So they're not doing ceremony at a holy time. 